Welcome to the Breakthrough Success Podcast, helping you achieve that breakthrough you've always been looking for in your business. And now your host, Mark Guberti. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Mark Guberti, and this is a podcast for marketers and small business owners who are looking for the breakthrough for their businesses. I am very excited about this show. For episode 62 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast, we are going to talk about mastering the game of high-ticket sales with our guest, Dan Locke. Dan has built a thriving network of multi-million dollar enterprises. He now inspires entrepreneurs and thought leaders from around the world how to do the same. Dan, otherwise known as the king of high-ticket sales, is one of the highest paid and in-demand consultants in the luxury and high-ticket space. And now it is my pleasure to welcome Dan to the show. Well, thank you, Mark. And my question is, are you ready for a breakthrough? I am definitely ready, and I'm really excited about this interview. And before we go really deep into it, um, one of the first questions I like to start off with is some background. So uh, when did you first know you needed to leverage high-ticket sales? Well, I think I discovered at a very early age that when it took took you all the way back, I first immigrated to North America, to Canada years ago when I was 14 years old. Uh, with no money, no connections, and not a word of the English language on my lips. And my mom and dad, unfortunately, got divorced when I was 16 years old. So at a, as the only child in my family, I had to learn to grow up and stop being a boy and be a man and take care of my family, take care of my mom. So I started my first business and when I was in high school at a very early age. During my entire career, my whole life, I've only worked for somebody for less than one year in my life in a grocery market, in a, in a, in a supermarket, begging grocery for people. That was the only job I've ever had. And so I've always been very entrepreneurial, trying to think of ways to be successful and make money and all these things. I think when I first discovered, I tried a lot of different things. I tried a lot of different businesses, fixing computers for people and network marketing and vending machines and all these crazy, stupid ideas that none of them really worked uh, until I found my first mentor. And I found my first mentor, his name is Alan. And Alan was in my early 20s and he took me under his wings and he taught me about copywriting. Now, what is copywriting? Copywriting is nothing more than Salesmanship in print, it means putting words on a piece of paper at a time was direct mail. Imagine those days, Mark, direct mail, like actual stamps and envelope. We are sending out these letters and messages to people and people would buy our stuff. And so from there, I discovered something very, very interesting because I was after I worked with Alan for a year, basically he took me on his wings and I was his apprentice. And after that one year, I started my own one-man advertising agency, you could call that. So I was writing ads for people and business owners. And I was charging about, I think, $1,000 back then uh, for a sales letter. And, and I was getting busy and, and trying to get clients and doing some work. And what's good, it was, it was making decent money, a few thousand dollars. And then Alan would tell me, say, hey, Dan, seems like you're getting pretty good at this. You should increase your price. And I said, okay, so what are you thinking? Like, what, like 10%, like $1,100 for, for a gig? Nah, double it. I said, what? Double it, what do you mean? Yeah, just double it. I said, no one's going to pay me double, are you crazy? Like, <laughs> like just no way. Just, just do it. I said, all right, because one thing about me is very coachable. So I doubled my, my fee for to $2,000 as a copywriter. And what I found, it's very, very eye-opening, very interesting. Not only the number of clients coming in, it didn't, didn't slow down, but actually attracted better clients. I thought that was very interesting. And a few months later, uh, Alan, when I had a conversation, it was getting busy in my appointment book and my just my calendar is getting filled up again. And he said, you know what? Increase your price again. I said, no, no. I just did it like a few months ago. That's insane. Nobody like increased the prices like that quickly. I said, nah, just do it. I said, what, like, what, $2,500? Nah, double it, 4K. 
I said, what the f***? No way. 4K? No one is going to pay 4K. I'm a young guy in my early 20s. I, I don't have enough experience. Even the top, top guys, top, top guys back then is charging like maybe 10K in the world. What's 4K? No. I said, yes. I said, no. I said, yes. Test it. And I doubled the price. I said, I said, this time I want you to go back and I want you to practice this. I want you to rehearse in front of the mirror practicing asking for money, asking for big money. I said, oh, okay. And then I, I practiced in front of the mirror. It was so hard. Like the four, like for, like I did, like I was stutter for 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 four thousand dollars, right? I couldn't, I couldn't even say the price for the strict face. And I did that, and same same thing happened. Calendar filled up, better clients, more profit, and more money. And almost like within that period of time, and it came back, and again he asked me double the price again to eight thousand dollars, and I did this time. And throughout the years, that's kind of my first exposure to the whole high ticket concept. That what I've learned, I learned a few things. Number one, it doesn't take as much effort to sell a one thousand dollar thing versus a ten thousand dollar thing. In some cases, it takes less effort. Second is that I've learned that business is a game of margins, not volume. This is a game of margins, not volume. That you that sometimes some entrepreneurs they might make the mistake of. Well, let me get more revenue, more revenue, and more revenue. You look at Inc. 500, they're very driven by revenue. Yeah, all the revenue is good. We need revenue. But at the end of the day, is how much are you netting? Uh, I think the mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make is they think, oh, if I generate enough revenue, that there has to be some net profit somewhere. And that's a bad assumption, very bad assumption, because it may, may not be the case. I've seen companies that have grown very fast grown their revenue very rapidly and then went out of business because they were just expanding without looking at the bottom line, without understanding that business is a game of margins, not volume. Uh, I'd rather I would take higher margins. And that's why every business that I have right now, it's all high margin business. I don't want like low profit and no margin business because when we do that, there's no no room for error. There's no, you cannot make any mistakes and you have to squeeze every penny that you've got uh, and and I don't like that. I don't like to do that. So, yeah. So that's how kind of first exposure to the high ticket sales world. Dan, thank you for sharing with us how you got started on this journey and realized that high ticket sales were very important. And uh, you mentioned the story how uh, you're gradually asked to go from one thousand to two thousand, then to four thousand, then to eight thousand, and. Mm. You highlighted a big point in your story where at the beginning you couldn't uh, comprehend charging two thousand, and then all those times in the mirror for the four thousand. So uh, we have like quality products, but charging that high price that takes a high level of confidence. So how could we become more confident in what we offer and being able to charge those premium prices for our products and services? Mm, good question. I think most people, they come to me, entrepreneurs or business owners, they come to me because of that, that they could see like they believe they deserve to charge more. They believe their value is more. But chances are, number one, what holds them back is not actually what I found out of 10 is not the marketplace. It's their own lack of confidence that it's not even confidence is they are not comfortable asking a lot of money they're not comfortable asking for what charge what they're worth so because of that then they very often project their own struggles to the clients i'll give you an example let's say they're selling something for two thousand dollars so it's like a, a program let's say it's as simple as like a, a online co program for two thousand dollars and suddenly they now as i work with them say okay i want you to charge five thousand dollars oh i said no 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 i can't charge then i cannot charge five thousand dollars i cannot charge five thousand dollars i said why why not and it's oh no i'm not i was like, i'm not my people's not going to pay five thousand i'm not going to pay five thousand for this i said how do you know well i just know but no but how do you know no because i'm not going to pay for it so they project their own values onto the clients so just because you won't pay for it doesn't mean your clients won't pay for it. Just because you're not comfortable with it doesn't mean they they are not comfortable with it. Just because they say I don't I'm not gonna watch a 90 minute webinar doesn't mean they don't watch a 90 minute webinar. 
or they say I'm not gonna uh, buy over the phone with a stranger. Well, just because you don't do that doesn't mean they won't buy over the phone with a stranger. So it's all your limiting belief that you have that holds you back. That's number one. Second is it has to do with the simple law of supply and demand. You can charge whatever the hell you want if you can drive up. If there's enough demand for what you offer and there's limited supply, you charge whatever you want. So you have to learn to use that to your advantage. And that goes into the marketing, positioning, and pricing, and a lot of different things on how to drive up demand. And while you're driving up demand, how do you restrict supply? If you're always easily reachable and available, you're not very valuable. You're not very valuable. It's very simple. You look at you look at example like Ferrari. You know you know a lot certain Ferrari brands, certain Ferrari models. You can just walk in and buy. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You need to buy, have been a Ferrari buyers first, then they will let you order. Even that, you got to wait for freaking how many months before you get it, sometimes years before you get it. Yeah, that's supply. That's restricting the supply, limited supply. So I think when it comes to what we sell, we have we, business owners, sometimes we're so desperate and we have the scarcity mindset that, oh, yeah, I'm going to be available all the time. I have to be always be there and I have to be able to answer the phone 24-7. And they don't understand how this works and how the law of economics works. So how can you drive up more demand and how do you restrict the supply? How do you practice? How do you be comfortable with asking for a lot of money? And how do you not project your own values and struggles to your prospects? I mean, that's just like a couple key kind of takeaways. But I mean, I work with people like very in depth into a lot of these different things, right? And that's why very few people can do what I do. Uh, and because most people are not comfortable with it. Dan, thanks for sharing with us how we can become more confident in uh, charging premium prices for what we offer. And one of the things you mentioned uh, in this interview and uh, in places beyond this interview also is that one of the quickest ways to make high ticket sales is to get on the phone with people because that's yes. conversation built. So can you explain to us why that's the case and how we can get more of these phone calls? Oh, yeah, good question. So I think, and some people sometimes ask me the question, well, Dan, how do you define like high ticket? What does that mean? And I think it's, it means different things to different people, uh, but to kind of, make it more applicable to, to most people for now. Let's, let's say define that as like a program. If you're selling anything online, that's like $3,000 and above. Okay. So, so let's just define it that way. So 3000 is like a $3,000 program, five, 10,000, 25,000 dollars program. That's let's think of that as a, as a high ticket. Now, first of all, think about the math goes back to business game of margins. So let's say Mark, you are, what are you selling on, by the way, Mark? What, what's, what's your offer online? Uh, my most high-end offer is a content marketing course, which currently goes for nine ninety seven. Okay, nine ninety seven, right? And do you have anything? So you have nine ninety seven. What 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 else do you have? I have several all access passes for my summits, which go anywhere from forty seven dollars to somewhere close to like three hundred dollars, depending on um, when they buy. Okay. Okay. So got it. So, so from there, so you have some, some kind of low ticket offer to bring people in to kind of expose them to your work, right? So to get familiar with you. And then so far your kind of quote unquote high, high end package is the $997 package. Now imagine if you say you are selling the, whatever you're selling right now online, how many units you sell per month. Imagine you sell the same amount of units, but right now you're selling them at, at 2997 versus 997. Is that going to make a difference to your bottom line? Definitely. Yeah. And with the same amount of work, same amount of units, right? But now you're making multiple more money. Here's the thing. With online, 997, I'm assuming you are driving them to a, a, what, a sales letter or some sort or some video to buy a $997 course, right? Yes. Yeah. So, And that's very normal. So, however, when we want to go to that three, dollars $4,000 price point, it becomes... Uh, way more difficult for someone to make a decision with just watching a video or seeing some sales letter and make that $3,000 purchase 
the conversion will be much, much lower. On the other hand, if you just drive them to what I call an let's say application process, they apply and you restrict the, the supply. Hey, you know what? I've got this program on content delivery with some some coaching with me, but it's I'm limited to only how many people it's gonna I'm gonna work with on a regular basis. And you apply here, book a time, and we'll talk on the phone. Now, suddenly, if you want to close a higher dollar amount, higher ticket package, you have to get them on the phone because they need to talk to somebody. They have questions. They need to be comfortable with you and what you do and what you stand for and, and the value that you provide. And, and suddenly, when they, because when they invest more money, here's the big key. When people are selling low-ticket offer, let's say the course, 997, anything about a couple grand, what most people do, why they struggle to, to make the high-ticket offer is they sell information. I don't sell information. I provide transformation. That's a very key distinction. I'll say it again. I don't sell information. I provide transformation. I'm not here to give them a bunch of videos to watch. I'm here to change their f***ing life. When, when the value, when the proposition is different, that's why you can ask for more money. And that's why you need a personal touch with a phone call in order to do that. So I challenge someone, you're charging three, $4,000, you want to close that without telephone? I think it's very, very, very difficult. Even though you could, let's say, pretend you got a big name, you get away with that, you'll probably make two, three, five to 10 times more money if you actually get them on the telephone. That's just a fact. So that's why you need to do that through a telephone. Now, obviously, then you need your telephone skill, how to do the high to closing. And how do you, it has to do with your script, it has to do with the, the way you ask questions and a lot of these different things, right? So, but that's the concept of it. To sell more, you got to get them on the phone. Dan, thank you for sharing those insights into why this is so important and uh, basically how we can make that transformation where we're going from something like a 997 to a 2997 and even beyond that and yes. continue to uh, acquire more clients. Uh, I mean, for certain people, like there's only a certain number they can take before they feel burnt out. So how can we continue to acquire more clients without feeling burned out or spread too thin? Mm, good question. I would answer in two ways. First of all, why we want to charge more is not just because, oh, Dan, you know, are we, are we just like, being greedy? It's not about being greedy. It's about when you charge more, you can now provide a better experience for people. You can provide a, a better outcome. You can deliver more value. That's why I charge more. That's number one. Number two, you feel better about delivering that value. Just imagine if someone paying you $1,000 mark versus paying you $5,000, are you gonna treat that client differently? Are you gonna wanna deliver more? Are you wanna go the extra mile, yes? Definitely. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's very, it's human nature. So, and because on the other hand, when they pay more, they also have, they're more invested into it. I bet people will buy 27, 37, 47. A lot of people buy those, those programs. They never open it, they never read, they never do anything with it. Because there's not enough skin in the game. Here's what I've learned. The more you pay, the more you pay attention. The more you pay, the more you pay attention. Someone invests at a high level, guess what? They will f***ing show it up. They would want to put in the time. They would want to do the work. They're not wishy-washy. They're not interested. They are committed. It's a very different client. And guess what? When they're committed, then they're more likely to take action. They're more likely to get results, right? I bet even right now, people who are buying your $30 thing versus a $1,000 thing, is there a difference in terms of the client commitment? Absolutely. Absolutely. So because of that, it's not just about all greedy. No, it's you deliver a better experience and they, they, you get a more committed client, right? Now, on the other hand, so how do you do it and deliver in a way that you can scale? Well, the way I teach is you do it through a group coaching. So it doesn't matter. They say a very common model, a seven week or eight week or six week kind of group coaching. So you do it as a group. So you deliver your class, let's say a eight week program, you deliver your class and then you also do a and a with them. You do it as a group. You don't do it as a as an individual one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I do leave it a one-on-one, -on -one, but for a lot of money, like for six figure and above plus revenue share. Other, anything less than that, I'm not interested. But with 
a group coaching model. Now it doesn't matter if you sell two, three thousand dollars, and it doesn't matter if you're one person, it doesn't matter if you're ten people, it doesn't matter if you're a hundred people. Your time teaching is the same. In fact, they actually get more value because you can always attach a Facebook group where they can interact and help each other and support each other, your students. And you can also do that. So you won't get people get burned off on the whole coaching consulting thing because a lot of them they just they're doing it all wrong. Right. They're just doing it all wrong. Uh, so there's many, many different models. My mastermind group model, again, is more scalable. I can work with a, a group of people, high performance type A entrepreneurs, not without the one on one, but at the same time, they get a lot of value. So part of it is asking yourself, how can you deliver value beyond than just your time? And how can you deliver value outside of just working with people one on one? So you got to kind of think about that and structure your business model in a way that's that's scalable. But again, it depends on what's your goal. If your goal is just to make six figure, 100K, 200K a year uh, as a marketer, as a coach and consultant, thought leader, that's fine. You don't really need that. But if you want to get to that half a million, seven figure level, then it requires a different business model. Dan, thank you for sharing with us those insights on how we can continue to build our client bases without feeling burnt out and spread thin. And I definitely agree with how you say raising the price. You get fewer clients, definitely. I mean, I'm sure just to make this really extreme, you can get a lot of clients by charging $1 an hour for consultations, but then you Correct. wouldn't really want to serve them at all. I mean, uh, yeah. it's... Yeah. And it, has to, and it has a lot to do with your... Your lifestyle preference, it has to do with your, uh, the type of people that you want to work with. Now, I'm at a, it's, it's, to be fair, I'm at a point of career where I'm just much more selective of who I want to spend my time with. So just like right now, as I speak in the morning, I just turned down a very, very famous, famous, uh, you can say guru in his category. That want me to work with him. I said no. He was willing to pay me big bucks. I said no, because he doesn't certain kind of criteria. It doesn't meet the way that I want to work. So I turn it away. So part of the game is not so much as oh, I want to close more. I want to sell more. You also have to think about who are the people that you don't want to work with. Not just you're so desperate or just chasing the dollars. No, I'm very selective. Most people apply to work with me. I don't. I don't work with them. Um, because just now I am, it's not about, it's not even like pro, arrogance, anything like that. It's just, I'm very clear of who I want to work with and who I can produce results for and who I, who I don't want to work with and life is too short. So I don't want to even spend time on that. I don't want to waste their time. I don't want to waste my time. So it's not just writing a big check and say, oh yeah, no, you cannot buy me. Right. Um, and the truth is whatever money they've got, I probably got more anyway. So it really doesn't, so I need to, I want to be very careful, selective of who I work with. So I was saying, you only be, you only be effective by being selective. So client selection is also very key to this whole thing when it comes to high ticket. You don't just want to take on everybody. We're not here for everybody. We're just here for somebody. So just keep that in mind. I really love that idea of being selective. And you've mentioned that at this point in your journey, uh, you're more selective while some people may take on uh, more people in the beginning, but eventually gets that point where they're more selective. But at some point you were just starting out on your journey. So I'm wondering if you could share with us one of the big challenges you faced as you were getting on this journey of high ticket sales and the powerful lesson you learned during that challenge. I think is. It's people think of high ticket sales. Does that mean they sometimes take it out of context where, oh, Dan, just, are you saying that you just asked me to double my price or just increase my price? No, it's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I'm saying you got to look within and how can you be more valuable to your clients? How can you be more valuable to the marketplace? That So through all that period of time, I think the biggest challenge, not challenge, is just the journey of it. It's not overnight. If it's overnight, everybody would be charging you know, $3,000 an hour. Everybody would be charging $24,000 for a mastermind group. Everybody would be charging $100K for one-on-one consulting. No, very, 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 very few 
percentage on the planet can can do that, right? It's like everybody, you know, very few people ever become a celebrity singer or celebrity actor, right? You got to hone your craft. So you don't just charge higher prices. That's not what I'm trying to say. You have to earn the right to charge higher prices. And how do you do that? It's become the personal value becomes become the personal skills become. So there are many skill sets. Example, telephone cut telephone closing. Do not close on the telephone. Are you comfortable with that? Uh, maybe it will require you to learn how to create content like what you're doing now, right? Being a good interviewer. That's a skill set, right? I'm sure the, this is 62 episodes. I bet the first five, te- 10 episodes, you weren't as polished, right? <laughs> so, no, I right? <laughs> yeah, right? I bet even you listen back to the first couple episodes. Oh my God, did I just say that, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? It's the same idea that over the, now you've done 62 of these episodes. It means, yeah, you got to learn how to be a good content creator and how to extract good information from like guests and, and experts. Uh, that's another skill set that most people do not have because they don't know how to ask good questions. Uh, maybe it requires you to be a a decent uh, webinar presenter if you want to drive them to a webinar and sell your program or how to craft that script. So there are a lot of skill sets involved and the thing is there's no magic pill because when you're selling at that kind of level and people spending two, three, five, ten thousand $10,000 with you, you can't get away with stuff. By that, I mean your stuff has got to be good, right? Like when when people are buying a, a a Toyota, yeah, Toyota is good. They're not expecting much. But when when people are buying a, a nice car, right, a Porsche, a a you know Ferrari or whatever, right, they expect a lot, right? They want it to be like perfect. So you got to think about that. So it requires you to to up your game. To, to raise your standard, um, the way you do things, the way you market your personal brand. So there are a lot of these different things, and most people just are unwilling to do that, and they are unwilling to take the time and invest the time or invest the right guidance to do that, which is good because it means less competition. Everybody's fighting. No, I mean everybody's fighting. In, if it's in that marketplace, twenty-seven, thirty-seven, fifty bucks, a hundred bucks, three hundred, one thousand, yeah. That's a lot of, it's very crowded marketplace. Way less people are fighting at the five, ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar $15,000 mark, right? Um, that kind of price point, great. That's where I stay, right? So uh, it, it might feel like it's got to put in more work in the beginning, but when you get to the end and you can get to that point where you are, people are paying you that much, you just have such an advantage in the marketplace that Right now, let's say if you're running Facebook ads, if you're selling a thousand dollar program, that's fine. Uh, but if I can sell the same little program, and let's say we are serving the same niche, I sell a five thousand dollar program. Suddenly, I could spend more to acquire that sale and acquire that customers. That I can advertise to groups, I can advertise to 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 people that maybe might not work for you, but because my math works, right? Now I can do much more. I can buy, quote unquote, buy and acquire clients and customers at a much faster pace. That's a big advantage. They're a very big advantage. And the more I do that, the the more difficult it is to compete with what I do. So it has so many, so many advantages. I mean, I can talk about so many benefits of why high ticket, but I think the main thing is you gotta become a person of value because you can't both When you're charging that kind of money, you gotta be good at what you do, right? And um, definitely that whole idea of building the value that you provide to the marketplace is yeah. very valuable. And uh, one of the ways I believe that we can do that is by acquiring knowledge. And me in particular, I'm a big bookworm. So with that in mind, Dan, I'm wondering if you could share three great books that you think would be a great fit for breaking success listeners. I think the first book that I would recommend is one of my favorite authors, uh, Richard Koch, which he wrote a book. I think most people have heard of it. It's called 80-20 Principle. 80-20 Principle. And, and I love his work. And he's one of the very few business authors that I read all his books. So 80-20 Principle, because it pretty much summarizes a lot of what I do serving the top 20%, not the bottom 80%, sell the people. I always say uh, 
PWM, players with money, sell the players with money. People can take action. He's got, who's has the willingness and, and ability to spend money. So I would recommend that. Uh, 80 20 or any books by, by Richard, Richard Koch. I mean, it, the, the guy's amazing. Uh, the second book I would recommend is called The One Thing. The One Thing. Uh, it talks about the, the power of focus and having the one thing, the mastery of the one area. Like I'm, I'm only good at a couple of things. In other areas, I mean, in my life, I'm not very, very good. I'm, I suck, right? I can't, I can't do anything outside of the two or three core competency that I have. I mean, I don't know how to mow lawns. I don't know how to. Ch- I don't even know how to change a light bulb. Like, really, I do not know how to change a light bulb. Um, so, but I'm very focused, my, dedicate my life to just a handful of things that I focus on. So I would say the one thing, the third book that I rec- recommend is actually a book that I wrote a few years ago called F U money. And, and, and that book you can buy from Amazon or you can just go to F U money.com and download a few copy as well. I, I have a, like a lead capture page. You can go there and download at F U money.com. So those are the three books I recommend. Dan, thanks for sharing those three great book recommendations. And before I give you a plug where you can share with us where we can find you on the web, I've been asking you a bunch of questions. And with that in mind, what is one question that you believe we need to be asking ourselves more often? Hmm. Uh, Not just one. I would give you three. Because those are the three questions I have in my offers I look at every day. Uh, but before I give you the three questions, I need to give you a little bit of context that as an entrepreneur, I think naturally we are very optimistic. We are very look for the, the bright side that we look for what's good and what things everything works out. But as you see, as I mature as a businessman, that uh, that it's not like that always things are always good and works to our favor. So I would say the three questions I look at every single day, ask myself, and this is not being negative, it's just being smart. It's being smart. So the first one is, what don't I know? What don't I know? So what's the what's kind of what's the blind spot? What am I what am I not seeing? Right. So what don't I know? What don't I see? So what don't I know? What don't I see? And third one is, what if my my assumptions were wrong? Because all business problems start with bad assumptions. All the business failures that I had because of bad assumptions. All the money I lost because of bad assumptions. So now I actually learn to prepare and actually prepare mentally what could go wrong, right? So yeah, what do I see? What do I know? What if my assumptions were wrong? So those are the three questions. A little bit unusual, I know. Uh, but as you mature as an entrepreneur, you, you appreciate those questions more. I definitely have an appreciation for those questions, hearing them. I mean, I don't really get questions like those very often on the show. That's why I love asking this question to get a variety of uh, different insights based on what questions we need to be asking ourselves more often and with questions in mind i have one final question for you Mm. shared all these amazing insights with us today and for breakthrough success listeners wondering where can we find you on the web i think yeah you could definitely search me my name dan lock d and l okay i mean (laughs) if they cannot find me i think we've we've we've, we've got to talk we've got a problem (laughs) but uh, but i think the best way to start is actually go just go to my youtube channel Uh, i think mark that's how you found me as well Uh, if you go to my youtube channel just type in dan lock i've got hundreds of i think now 500 plus videos on there and just from all kinds of knowledge that they can, it's all free. So there, and 99.9% of people who consume my content, they are never ever gonna be my clients. We're not gonna work together. But I do that, it's more to spread the, the message and what I do, right, with people. So a lot of young people, I get comments, I get emails, I get private messages. Just like just today, I got two that thanking me that my work has impacted them in some way. So that's what I do. Uh, I'm a mentor, I'm a teacher. So 
through that, I think they could they could learn a lot from that. It's all free. All right, Breakthrough Success listeners, those links and the show notes will be on markgabrady.com slash E62. Dan, it was a pleasure to have you on the Breakthrough Success podcast. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. To never miss an episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on whatever player you are using. If you are a regular listener and haven't done so already, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give this podcast a review or a rating. Two ways you could do this are through markgaberti.com slash iTunes or markgaberti.com slash Stitcher. That ends this episode. Don't forget, dream big, achieve greatness, and unlock your potential today. Want your tweets to get retweeted to my 360,000 Twitter followers? All you have to do is say something nice about the Breakthrough Success Podcast and include the link markgaberti.com slash iTunes. Once you've posted that tweet, Email me, mark at markgaberti.com, and I will retweet your tweet to my 360,000 followers. This podcast is a production done by Mark Gaberti. For more insights, head on over to markgaberti.com.